a commonly asked question, what can I do if I can't use food? Well, first I'll ask them, why can't you use food? And the most common answer is, my dog doesn't like it. So then I say that I'm going to train the dog to like it. Um, if there's a medical reason, um, I ask them, what are you feeding your dog? You can't tell me you're not feeding your dog. And they tell me whatever it is, whether it's raw diet or what have you. I say, right, let's use this in training. Because for owners, using food makes it easy. It's a done deal. So if he doesn't like it, I'll train the dog to like it, which is simple. You tell the dog, if you sit, take this bit of kibble, um, I will give you a tummy rub. If you sit and take this bit of kibble, I'll say, on the couch. If you sit and take this kibble, I'll say, go play. Sit and take the kibble, I'll, I'll walk on. And so the dog learns, I love taking kibble. It's not very tasty, but now it's the secondary reinforcer. The kibble means that lots of good things are gonna happen. So of course the most important thing if you want the dog to enjoy food and to take it from your hand, you know, when you're outdoors, don't feed the dog from a food bowl. If he's getting a whole bunch of kibble in his bowl for free, then if he's a little worried about being outdoors, he may not be so inclined to take it there. So start hand feeding your dog kibble. And it's probably the most important advice I can give to anyone who has a dog that they want to train. Hand feed the kibble in the kitchen and other rooms of the house and do it by the front door and with the front door open and then the dog half in and half out. Oh, before you know it, he now does it outside the front door. Now in your garden, then at the end of your garden path, then in the street and so on. And once the dog is taking food from you, he can be trained so quickly, so quickly, because we can use the food as a lure to teach him what we want to do and we use it as a short-term reward to say thank you for doing it before we then phase the food out altogether and, and use these much bigger life rewards. There's actually something more important than phasing out food rewards and it's phasing out the food lure, which you do very quickly. And, and it's probably the, the biggest, thing, biggest thing wrong with um, lure reward training at the moment. You have the food in your hand, so the dog will look at your hand and then rover sit, going. So it now helps an owner who may not have, you know, good sort of affect or animation they can move their hand and the dog's looking at it, so very quickly the dog learns the meaning of the hand signal. Then you just put the food in your pocket and rover sit, doing, and it works. Now we're only using the food, good dog, as a reward from our pocket. Um, we want to phase that out eventually um, because there's much better rewards out there. I mean, the two big ones that I use are playing with other dogs and walking and sniffing. So what we would do there is uh, I would ask the dog to sit, and then when he sits, we say, go play. And every time you ask him to sit and you stop the play session, you can use it as a reward again to reward him for sitting. If you don't do that, if you just let the dog play, you know, uninterrupted, then the play session is going to become a distraction to training. And you're going to have a dog that he's fine till he sees another dog, then he, he wants to get over there. So we go sit, go play, sit, go play, sit, go play. The ex another exercise is when you're walking your dog, every 25 yards, stop. Ask the dog to sit, look at you, there's a good boy, let's go. So now, same thing, we're using the walk, which is a massive reward, that usually people would use once. You know, they say to the dog, let's go walkers, and the dog goes oing, 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 and they put him on leash and give him that amazingly big reward, a walk, for acting like a, 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 an idiot. So if you stop every 25 yards, Every time you stop the walk, good boy, let's go. We're now using the walk as a reward. And so at that point, food is simply unnecessary for basic manners and obedience. I still tell people, though, to carry food with them for classical conditioning. Let's say, um, oh, a kid whizzes by on a skateboard. Then it's really good to say, wow, do you see that kid go? Treat, 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 treat. So now the dog makes the association, wow, I love it when kids go by, especially when they're on skateboards. So I would still always keep food on me to use for classical conditioning, but we want to make sure that we don't need food in our hand as a lure or in our pocket as a reward to get the dog to respond. We don't want the dog's um, reliability to be contingent on us having food in our hand or on our body. So we phase it out. There's loads of other rewards that which are much better. Um, in addition to playing with other dogs and walking on leash, we've got fetch, we've got tug, and other games like if you come and sit, I'll chase you, you know, give us a hug. So, so these are the rewards which really mean something to the dog.